22 years you've been in this game, so to speak, uh, 30 million albums. The story is, is, is well known, but I want to know where, where it began for you. You're still here. You're still beyond the call of relevant. But tell us a little bit about where you come from. Well, um, I come from east side Long Beach, Long Beach, California. Um, I was raised by my mother, a single parent, and she raised me on good music, having a good time. I'm a 70s baby. So in the 70s, it was all about peace, love, and happiness. So I believe that that spirit is the spirit that I live by today. You know, being a kid, just being a big, a big grown kid. And I love to have fun. I love to, to show love. I love music. I love art. I just love being creative. And my mother always kept me in the presence of people. Like, it was times in the 70s where it would be a party in the living room, and all the kids would be in the back. And they would call me in the living room to come dance because I could dance real good with the big girls. <laughs> <laughs> what was some of that music that your mother was playing? It was a song called, I Ain't Gonna Bump No More With This Big Fat Woman. <laughs> That was, that was one of the songs I used to dance to the most. I ain't gonna bump no more with no big fat woman. <laughs> <laughs> and and growing up in school, I mean, it, you were not a rapper first. You were into music. You sang in the choir. Yeah. You were you were very much a child of the arts, even though quote unquote you were in the LBC. Yeah, it, it was uh, brought to me at an early age at the church I went to, Golgotha Trinity Baptist Church. My auntie and, and the people that at the church, they would always put together plays where we would have to act and reenact certain heroes of yesteryear to, you know, to become who we are. And it was through singing, acting, and just being in front of a crowd at an early age that helped me develop, you know, the confidence to where when I was I was able to speak in front of a crowd, I was able to be confident at all times. And that's something that you see not just in your music, but in the way that you deal with your brand. I mean, I watch you, you can deal with, and you do, you, you deal with, with just about anyone, which might be hard for some people to comprehend when they think initially of like Doggy Style, you know, 1992. How many of you bought that album? Okay, good, good, good. Um, you, but you're an everyman. I, I like to call you Black Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> it feel like that, because I mean, I can do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it. And um, it feels good to do it. I feel like you shouldn't be restricted. You shouldn't be put in a box. You should be who you are at all times. And I've always been a loving, happy, fun, outgoing individual. I'm a fun guy that loves to have a fun time. Over the course of these years, uh, you, you, you made many records, but a lot, of, a lot of your peers who were making records at the same time as you in the early 90s, they're no longer making rap albums. Um, some of them are still in the business, but they had to sort of shed their hip hop persona to continue to move forward. Why is it that you think you've been able to maintain your place in pop culture without really having to shed the fact that this is the Snoop D O double G? I think it's the way I came. I came being pure and sincere and being honest. And that's all I know. I just gotta be me. I don't know how to be nobody but me. And this is what I'm great at. So. I'm gonna continue to do that. You know, I don't know if it rubs you the right way or the wrong way. It makes me feel good, so I'm gonna do it. If it's good to you, it must be good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Within all that, though, um, you, you're gonna have you're gonna have challenges and struggle in figuring out which which lanes to choose. What what might be some of the the, the harder decisions you've had to make in order to to stay relevant or to stay on the journey where you are today? Well, my decisions are never made based on what the popularity of the world will, will think. It's always based on what feels good to me and what's best for me. And I don't never look at, you know, what I'm doing and say, well, what are people going to think? I do it for the reasons that it makes me feel good, so eventually it's going to make you feel good. That's how it's always been for me. Every, every since I came into the music industry, it's always been about the expression of my expression becoming your expression. It's just we become one. I feel like the people feel like Snoop Dogg is a part of their life. It's not like I'm a rapper or a producer or actor. I'm like one of their family members because they've been with me for so long and I've been so up close and personal. It's never been like a secret. I've opened my closet up from day one. And I think that's one of the reasons why a little, a, a little kid and the grandmother will both be like, hey, that's Snoop Dogg. That's crazy you say that because 
a lot of times the kids will approach me and I'm trying to figure out why do the kids like me? And this is before I had a football league, before I became, you know, more positive in what I was doing. And the kids would always come up and say, we love you, we love you. And I never understood why they loved me until I had to figure out that I'm that kid. I am who that kid is. He is seeing himself in me. So regardless of how my rhymes may sound, if they're derogatory, if they're, if they're explicit, that kid sees something in me that resembles himself. So once I figured that out, I started to aim my pen in a more positive direction to write songs that matter to the kids and do things for the kids like a youth football league. You're from an interesting genre in music, in hip hop, in that a lot of times artists are, are afraid to do what you just described, to make that lane change. There's this perception that you have to maintain the exact same struggle, the exact same front that you had when you first came out in order to stay relative. And you, you see some of these artists that, that they're struggling because they, they can't let out what it is they have to give. Do you, do you find yourself in, ever in a position where you're mentoring some of these other young artists? Because every other young artist I see coming up, they look at you and they shout you out all the time, Uncle Snoop, Uncle Snoop. You're on collaborations with a lot of these young artists. What do you say to them? Well, I'm, I'm, like, a, I'm like a real uncle because I give them guidance on and off the field, meaning that in the business and in life in general. And a lot of times when I came into this music industry, I didn't have that. I didn't have big brothers to help me. I had to learn on my own. So what I wanted to do was be something like there had never been before. I wanted to be an uncle or a wisdom of guidance for these young rappers and young entertainers where they can call on me and get some information. And that's what it's been like for the past 10 years. I've been mentoring, I've been helping, I've been associating myself with all of the young rappers and trying to be positive and give them an understanding that you do have to reach a certain point in your life and your career well, you have to make a better decision for you. And by me having kids and a wife, it also structured my life in a different way to where I pull back from the things that I used to do to the things that I know how to do. Mm. There's also something I think, and I'm, I'm sure this wasn't planned, but there is something about your flow. The fact that your flow is, always came from a place of, of melody. And even though you were talking about things that were abrasive and sometimes downright guttural, you said them in such a nice way. <laughs> like, oh, I don't love them hoes. <laughs> hey, hey, exactly. That they, that, that they were less abrasive. But I think, that where did, where did that come from? Where did you, you get that sound? Because obviously everyone, any, any rapper, it's about that cadence and flow, but yours is unique and timeless. Well, like I said, I'm a 70s baby. So in the 70s, we only had certain people to look up to and players, you know, I don't know if y'all understand what a player is, not a football player, a basketball player, <laughs> but a player in the neighborhood had a certain conversation about himself. He didn't never speak too loud. And when he spoke, you understood what he said because it was so smooth and so melodic. And I've always wanted to be a player from a kid. So when I was able to become a player, that was one of my traits, one of my you know, accolades, to be able to speak smoothly on the microphone and not be so aggressive and so loud, but to get your point across by being smooth and in pocket. Mm. I, I said to someone the other day, there are only a few rappers that I look forward to seeing when I'm old. <laughs> and I know that when it's like, hey, Snoop's playing Vegas, oh, we, sh we should go, we should go. <laughs> we should, we, come on, we, we should go. And you're going to be able to come out there and be like, bow, wow, wow, you be over, you be and everyone's going to get down. I just might be in the wheelchair, though, <laughs> but it'll be cool. I'm still going to be rolling. <laughs> Nonetheless, you know, you, you, you move forward. And we talk about the things that you've done to, 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 to be in the conversation. And you got 35 million followers on Facebook. Your YouTube channel just broke the 1 million subscriber mark. If you've never watched GGN News, which Snoop hosts, it's just pure brilliance. I'm, I'm doing a bad job of interviewing compared to what he, this dude does on his show. And he can talk to anybody. I follow you on Instagram. You clog my feed in the most wonderful way. But you do this really interesting job of, of, of showing, you don't just say, look at my, you actually you don't even say, look at my cars, look at my this, look at my that. You really take people on a journey of your life to the point where they feel like they're on the journey with you and they feel like you're not just Snoop Dogg, but you really are the homie. What is it that sort of made you embrace social media the way you have? My team, Cashmere and Stampede, um, I wasn't a fan of it at all. I remember the first time they was like, 
get on Twitter, people follow me. I'm like, I don't want nobody following me. Because <laughs> I didn't understand the dialect. You know, I'm like, and there's people be like, hey, Snoop, I'm following you. I'm like, what you mean you following me? So once they explained it to me and, you know, I, I understood it, then I put my twist on it and I made it what it is. It's like, I wanted it to be personal. I didn't want it to be my people who put up pictures or put up and say, well, Snoop's going to be here. I want it to be more personal where they can see and feel me. And I interact. If it's things on there that I do like, I say, hey, I like this. If it's things on there that I don't like, I speak on it. And I feel like people respect the fact that I'm so up close and personal with them and I don't have a star wall. Because when you become successful, it's a star wall that pops up, whether it's security or it's just some sort of wall that prevents the people from getting to you. And I never wanted that wall. I always wanted to be up close and personal with the people who make me who I am. Yeah, it's, it really resonates. I mean, one of the ones you posted the other day was, was real simple, but you know, it just said, find something you love uh, and do it, forever. do it forever. And that's all you said, but it, it was like, oh, he's not just, this isn't just a job. It's a reminder, like, you love this. And being on that journey with you, following you, I feel like your, your followers, even when you read the comments, it's, it's cool to see the way people respond to you and they're inspired by you. And I'm inspired by them because they make me who I am. Maybe some days where I want to quit, you know, 22 years strong doing this thing, I'd be wanting to say, when do I get a vacation? Some people ha take vacations. I don't know what a vacation is. I've never been on one because I'm so caught up with what I do and what I love. I love doing what I do. It's not even about the money, it's about the passion that I, that I bring because I'm so creative and I love getting it out and I love working with positive people. So at the end of the day, it's more about do it until you can't do it no more. Then when you're done doing it, then you can look back and enjoy it because I don't get a chance to look at what Snoop Dogg has done. When I see documentaries or things of my past, I have to stop and watch because I'm so busy playing. Mm. I'm in the game right now, so I can't watch my stats and my highlights because I got another game to play tomorrow. Amen. It brings me to the point that I, I always wonder is, A, do you sleep? Because everything that you do, you do passionately and aggressively. Case in point, growing up, the old MTV days, the rock and jock football games, where they'd have the pros and the celebrities playing football, and Snoop would be out there, flag football, and you'd see the moves, and you'd see the stylist catches, and be like, oh, Snoop really likes football. He's, he's a football fan. Not to realize that you were not just a football fan, but a football mind. You are a certified football coach. What you've implemented as far as youth football leagues for kids in Los Angeles and in the nation is well documented. And now your own son is playing in high school in Vegas at the highest national level. He's being looked at at every Division I school there is, from Notre Dame to USC. He can go wherever he wants. But I, I watched the way you talk about football in the past. Where did that come from to the point where you weren't just a fan of the game, but you became a student and a mind of the game? Well, I played as a kid. And then when I had kids, my oldest son wanted to start playing football at eight. I was just a father on the sideline. And then one of the coaches said, why don't you come out here and help us? And once I started helping, I fell in love with all of the kids. I stopped coaching my son and started coaching the other kids. And then the following year, I took my son to another league and then I said, you know what, I want to start my own league because I feel like this league is not catered to the urban communities. There's a lot of parents that want their kids to play, but they can't pay $300 a kid when they got four kids. So I put together the Snoop Youth Football League where the fees was 100 for the first kid. And if it was a second kid in the home, it was 50. So if you had four kids living in one home, 150 to 250 for four kids as opposed to 300 for one kid. And then we had the kids maintain a 2.0 GPA in order to play. Now it's up to 2.5, and every kid in my league maintains a 3.0 GPA. We got 50 kids. Thank you. We got 50 kids in Division I right now that's starting, that play on every Saturday. We have four kids in the NFL right now, and we have over 200 in high school getting ready to go to college. When, when you're able to, to, to say those stats, and obviously when you started the league, it was because you saw a need. What does that fill you with when, when you're able to say like, oh wow, this is what we've done. What does that do for you that perhaps is different from what music does for you? 
it makes me emotional where I could cry. You know, I don't get a chance to cry when I make music because I got to maintain that persona. Oh, he's mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg. But when I'm a football coach, I can cry, I can laugh, I can do whatever I want to do because I'm amongst the kids and I'm being a big kid. And just to see the, that these kids believed in me and my program and the people who helped put it together and to see 10 years later what we're doing is awesome because the NFL recognizes me now. College recognizes me now. So it's like, this is bigger than music because I'm giving hope to some kids who never even had the, the dream of going to high school. Now they're going Saturday football and eventually Sunday football and they could take care of their families. And it's all a tribute to the Snoop Youth Football League. So I'm very blessed and thankful. That's, that's amazing. One of my favorite things is when on a, on a Sunday, you know, Snoop will be watching the game and he will give you commentary of what's going on in the game and Instagram. And it's, it, it's really, really beautiful. But I also noticed that you never really, you don't really have a team. You have teams that no, you- I have a team. My team is the Steelers. Okay. But I have a bunch of home, yeah. <laughs> Steeler Nation. <laughs> but I have a, a lot of my friends and homeboys who play for particular teams. So am I not supposed to like my friend because he plays for this team and his team is offering me a whole lot of money to come perform at halftime? <laughs> <laughs> Get the money, man. <laughs> I had on some Stiller drawers and a Stiller tank top when I had that 49er jacket on for all the Stiller fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That, that, that is a beautiful thing. I got to figure out how to do something like that. Um, you did a song with Drake last year. Yeah. Very interesting song in that it, it talked about this no guns allowed. And if you think of Snoop back in the day, the last thing- all guns allowed. All guns allowed. Yeah. What motivated the, that song for you? And what's come after it is, is, is really cool. Well, what, after, what came after is me getting with the League of Young Voters, which is a great, great organization that's against gun violence and just violence in, in general. But it was just me just sitting at home watching all of these terrible shootings where kids would go to school and shoot up the whole school and theaters and just, I was like, it's time for me to use my voice because I feel like if I stand up, there may be a kid who's about to go shoot somebody and he says, man, I like Snoop Dogg. I'm not gonna do it because he said no guns allowed. And that just was my train of thought into it. And I feel like since I put that song out, it has been a decline in those kind of shootings. Not that we can stop them all, but the awareness that we do care, that someone like me who comes from gun violence and comes from that world is against it now. And I stand firmly against it to where it's like, it was real. That's why I put it on my record. The records that I make are the most intense that you'll get from me. So when I speak on my music, it's from the heart. So if I take the time out to say, this song is called No Guns Allowed, put Drake on the song and my daughter, shoot a video showing all of this violence with guns, it makes the awareness level go up to where people will start to say, he cares, so we should care. So maybe one day we'll be able to get those laws fixed where everybody can't just go get a gun just because you want a gun. Mm. And that's what I was doing it for. How much, how much has parenthood uh, shaped and framed the mindset of, of the 21st century, 2014 Snoop? <laughs> Man, my kids are special. <laughs> they, um, they make me better, you know, in all ways, especially on the music side. Like my oldest son, I never heard of Wiz Khalifa. And he turned me on to Wiz Khalifa. And then me and Wiz Khalifa became best of friends and went on tour, made a movie, made a record. And we brothers now. So it's like, you have to listen to your kids. Not, you, di you dictate to them all the time because a kid can teach you if you're just willing to listen. My youngest son, he's a football player. But at the same time, me and him, we agree to disagree. And then my daughter, she's a singer songwriter. So I'm hard on her telling her, look, baby, you got to get it all the way together. And don't be mad when I tell you this because the public going to be even meaner than I am. So it's just getting that understanding with the kids and being able to have a relationship with them to where they're my friends. Mm. They don't look at me as a mean old dad. They look at me as a cool father. And that's what a lot of things is going wrong with the parenting nowadays. There's not the communication. It's a gap. Kids and parents need to be friends. It's okay to dictate, but at a certain point in time, they're gonna become grown. And if they're your friend, they're gonna be able to tell you everything and you're gonna be there for them 
it's going to be a beautiful relationship. That's what I found out. It's amazing. I made the uh, Black Switzerland uh, not really a joke earlier. I really do think of you as Black Switzerland. It could be a movement. But it's because as a hip-hop artist and, and this guy who, who really put the LBC on the map, you go to China, you go to South Africa, you go to South America, you go to Dubai, you go to India and make Bollywood movies. And anywhere you go in any of these other countries, you dive 1,000% into the culture. You don't just show up and do a show. You go and you go all in. What is it that motivates you to, to, to take it to that level as opposed to just going, doing the show, getting the cash, and getting out? These people love me. I, I was taught love. See, when you taught love, you got to give it back. And the love that these people give me, some of these people from different countries don't even speak English, but they know every word to my song. So it's my obligation to give them the experience and the ride of their life, to be able to get up close and personal with Snoop Dogg. So when I leave, it's like I never left. We still connected from the hip to the dip. Well, <laughs> from the hip to the dip. <laughs> Highlight one of the, the top international experiences for you, culture-wise. Performing at Live Aid and Paul McCartney, Bill Gates, David Beckham, and a host of other people that's billionaires was on the side of the stage rocking to my music. And it was one point I just stopped and looked at him and I was like, I can't believe y'all know Snoop Dogg. Bill, Bill Gates. The Bill Gates. Monty, like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a beautiful thing. Where do you, where would you like to see it go from here? I mean, if you could just look out into the future, Snoop, 20 years from now, where, where do you, where do you want to be? What do you want to do that you haven't done? I want to go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Ain't that what people do when they enjoy the success of their life? Yeah. Well, I'm really, really, really good at vacation. Well, let's, let's I do that for a living. Can, I mean, this shirt is not a lie. Let's go to Hawaii then and do something special. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take you surfing in Hawaii. We'll do it. I don't know how to surf. I'm saying I will, I'll change that. For real? For real. Start off on the boogie board. with. Yeah. Start Put off. some fins on you first. Go slow, baby. All right. Snoop, thank you so, so much for coming out today. I mean, I couldn't think of a better way to end our first day. Snoop Dogg. <laughs>